All right, guys, welcome back to Was It Real? The Hills Rewatch Podcast. I am Brody Jenner with my co hosts, Audrina Patridge and Frankie Delgado. Today, we're going to be breaking down season three, episode two, Big Girls Don't Cry. And this originally aired on August 13th, 2007. Wowzers. Damn, I'm 16 old. years ago. Wow. Kinda. That is that's amazing. That is a long wonderful. time ago. Isn't that around your birthday, Brody? August, yeah, some is. like yeah. around there. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. yep. Wow. Leo season. Right? I remember this all is birthdays. True. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, so this episode is about Audrina introducing Justin to Lauren and Lowe. And this episode also covers Spencer proposing to Heidi while she takes her on a romantic getaway to Santa mm -hmm. Barbara. And uh, me to go and sh ring shopping, too. I remember that. I was on there telling Spencer he was crazy for uh, getting married at 23. Which, by the way, look at this. These two are still married, happily in love. This many years yep. later, I will stand corrected. Spencer, you were not crazy. You, you were not the crazy. love of your life, and I stand corrected. Love Brody, him. when he first told you, did you think, like, is this for the show or is this, like, for real? Like, are Honestly, you really going to propose? Time, I didn't know. I really didn't know. You know, with Spencer, I didn't know whether it was for the show. I did kind of think it was for the show. I knew he really loved her, and I knew that they, like, he was very serious about their relationship. But I, I, I know that he also thought it would be a great idea to get married on the show or get proposed and that's good ratings. But uh, so I was kind of genuinely not, I didn't really know free wedding mm -hmm. then, but I, I knew that, you know, the relationship was genuine. I knew it would have been good TV. I think he did too. But uh, ultimately I was very serious because they really did yeah. get married. He really went and got the ring. They really did get married and they are still happily in love. So yeah. it's, I stand corrected. That was, I was crazy. I did think he was crazy. It was twenty. We were twenty three years old. He like you know. I'd only known her for a year. I did think at the time it was a little. It was rushing it a little bit. Thought I could have mm -hmm. waited a little longer. But um, we were doing a reality <laughs> show, man. It needed to needed to happen quick. Up. Yep. So we started this episode over at the Hillside Villas, where Audrina tells Lauren she is interested in a guy named Justin, not Justin Bobby just yet, just Justin, who yeah. wants to abandon her. In Vegas. And I'll get into that. <laughs> so, no, no, no. Please, please. How, how does a guy abandon you in Vegas and then you go back to this guy? Like, what, well, what, what? so it's one Vegas, thing, man. you know, Come whenever on. you talk to your but friends, guy, I know for girls, like you tell them <laughs> the good and the bad, and sometimes only the bad sticks. I Wait that, a minute. They wanted to go to that strip club. That was the same Justin? And I, yeah. So he abandoned you in Vegas. Yeah. So basically, Justin and I you know, we're off and on for a while, even during the show through season one, two, and now three. Um, but none of it was on the show. So now it's finally kind of starting to surface. And now that I'm living with Lauren, we became really good friends. And, you know, you just kind of vent and like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. Or this is what happened. This is the only red flag that's holding me back. But I really like him. Um, he abandoned me in Vegas. And if you know Justin, you know that he's like Houdini. He just disappears sometimes. And in the beginning of our situationship, whatever it was, I wasn't used to that. And in Vegas, I remember we were there with a big group of people. And I like I went back to the table. I went to find him and he was just gone. Wouldn't answer his phone, disappeared, didn't hear from him till the next day. Thought he was in jail or dead. I don't know where he was. So that for me was like very frustrating and you know worrisome so i confided and learned about that and that it like stuck like i never really forgave him for that like it went yeah it was still in my mind today's episode is sponsored by care of care of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamin supplements and powders conveniently to your door every month Care-of's app helps you build a holistic routine and track your progress over time. Plus, you can earn rewards for sticking with your healthy habits. You take a short, in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized, doctor-backed recommendation. The quiz can be retaken at any time to switch up your packs and as your lifestyle and needs change. With summer travel plans approaching, Care-of makes taking your vitamins on the go so convenient with daily packs shipped right to your door. I personally love care of because it's shipped right to your door. You don't have to go up and down the aisles at grocery stores searching forever for whatever you need. And it's specifically 
customized to what you need. So it makes life a whole lot easier. And for 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code HILLS50. That's takecareof.com and enter code HILLS50 for 50% off your first order. Breathe some life into your own backyard with fastgrowingtrees.com this spring. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let fastgrowingtrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. Fastgrowingtrees.com's plant experts curate thousands of easy-to-grow plant, shrub, and tree varieties for your unique climate. Meyer lemons to evergreens and everything in between. Happy plants, happy home, right? But sometimes it's hard to know which plants will do best. No problem, because with FastGrowingTrees.com, you get customized recommendations based on your specific needs. Plus, their plant experts are always available to help keep your plants growing healthy through the season and beyond. I'm all about the uh, fast-growing trees because on my property, I got a lot of shady areas, and some of these trees just don't grow great in shady areas. So they know specifically which ones do, the amount of sunlight, and I like my fruit nice and quick. You know what I'm saying, Frankie? Nice and tasty. So fast growing trees. Join over 1.5 million happy fast growing tree customers like myself. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash the hills now to get 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash the hills. Yeah. And then Lauren is shocked and advises you to maybe not go for him again. And you point out that you're just that, that, that she's not interested in marrying the guy, that you're not interested in marrying the guy and it's just, you're just gonna go out on a date. It's not like I'm gonna marry the guy, I'm just going on a date. Keeping my opinions to myself, they just get me in trouble. Yeah, I was hard-headed and had to learn the hard way all the time back then. All the time. And, but lots, you were interested. Yeah, in lots of lessons learned. Because <laughs> he was in your life for a lot more than just a date from that point on. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, as you guys know, and then once you bring someone on the show, they don't just go away. And he became a big part of the show. Well, and so even like sometimes JB, when I didn't want to be with him or, or see him, I had to see him or be with him because he was a part of the cast now. So that made it really hard too. I think when people came around the show that were great TV also, the producers were like, oh, we need this guy. I mean, Justin was... He was obviously a great looking guy, but also just so like, you know, the things he would say and do on camera were just like, what? This is, I mean, he was such a pivotal, amazing, I think he was just incredible on the show. I mean, you know, his little one-liners, I mean, how are his one-liners? They're the best one-liners of, uh, I think, all of the hills. So, yeah, (laughs) you know, I think that even if you guys had split up or you guys even, you know, you guys, I think there was there a time, I mean, I can ask you this, was there a time where you guys were just sort of continuing the relationship on a little bit just for because he was had to be around all the time and they wanted you to have that romance yeah i think and i'll get into this more like later in the season or maybe season four but there are so many times where you know i wanted to i would break up with him on camera i was like okay he's not gonna sweet talk me i'm not gonna let it happen i'm gonna end it now and i'd have what i was gonna say in my mind and i'd sit down and you know he'd bat his pretty blue eyes. And I was like, Oh God, here we go. And I would just say what I had to say. And then I would get up and I would just leave because I didn't want him to suck me in. And then he would chase me down the street, follow me to my house. The I remember the vans followed us up there. He got out of his car to chase after me, forgot to put his car in park and his car rolled down the hill oh and God. crashed into the filming van. Yeah. It was like, now, why wasn't that on the show? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There was a lot of those moments. And then it's like, okay, you know what? Like we do have people rooting for us that are going through the same thing. So, I mean, let's just, I don't know. We'll just keep it going. Yeah. And then we both kind of dated other people, but then would come back together. There was always this like pull and push kind of thing between us. For sure. Got it. Yeah. Well, the next scene is uh, Heidi arriving at the Hills. Uh, no, it wasn't the Hillside Villas then. It was their, their new apartment. And she walks into the apartment and she sees like this wall Hollywood. just all graffitied up. And she's like in shock. Like she's like, what the hell is this graffiti? What is this? It's a protein shake. 
No, 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 no. What is this? Like there are there are I mean, a couple now. It's not, I mean, it's it was better. It was better than light yellow. But right? it's not a bachelor <laughs> part pad anymore, man. Like if you're really trying to be serious with a girl, you uh, ain't putting graffiti in the middle of your, uh, of your of your main. Uh, you didn't think that thing that thing was dope. Man. It was for a bachelor, <laughs> not for <laughs> I'm just not for like your living space. I'm kidding. That was ridiculous. Sure. Between that and the jellyfish, um, I like the jellyfish aquarium. I mean, that was innovative. And then the arcade, like Spencer, really did it up. Yeah, he really the wanted the You got the arcade, time. you got the Hollywood, you know, spray painted, the yeah. jellyfish. I mean, that, that apartment was kind of dope. Yeah, but he then <laughs> tells tells her that he has planned a little romantic getaway to Santa Barbara. Like, here, babe, this is how I, here's how I decorated our new place. Now, let's get married. <laughs> well, he <laughs> doesn't say it right go. there and then, but I he's know, like, I'm planning a little, a little thing. But, uh, I mean, I, I remember in my in my bachelor days, like, even my my – my places were never like I never decorated in like as a bachelor. I always decorated for like in case you know make everybody feel at home because you're you know you're just thoughtful thing. Yes, yeah. you know. Yeah. Did just... you ever do that? No. What with the deck? I mean, yeah, I always the condo you know, was never like a like a like. House. I didn't really decorate the condo. I just sort of did anything. But I mean, I always let you know somebody else decorate. No, like when I was with Caitlin for a long time, I let her. I, I let the people, female, I'm the, like not the best decorator and I know that and I'm, yeah. you know, I'm very aware of that. So I just, I, I, I prefer the female touch. Yeah. The female a, touch. On my, my, like my wife it. is perfect. She did exactly my house perfectly. So yeah. yeah your house is amazing. Frankie. Jen did such a great thanks job. Yeah. Thanks to Jen. hundred percent. No credit to Frankie. Frankie. Zero, zero credit. If you, just, if you go into the, <laughs> my, just there's go no the graffiti house, wall, you, but you know, if you go to the guest house. That's Frankie. Yeah. yeah. If, you're, if you guys have ever seen my guest house, <laughs> yeah, it's that's full it. of chargers gear yeah. everywhere and all my like sports memorabilia and my drum set. And it's like my yeah. bat, my, my, my man cave. Get your little man cave out. There. Yeah. 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 Aw, so this is kind of like Spencer's man cave because Heidi did tell us that they didn't actually live there. They lived in the Palisades. So yeah. that they kind of used that apartment on the show as just like a fun, like if they wanted to go to Hollywood, they'd stay there. They'd have friends over and it was more just like a fun place to Man, kid. have. And I wish we had Heidi here to fact check, but I'm pretty sure Heidi was in on all that stuff. You know, like Spencer going overboard with the... They, I don't think that was a real surprise for Heidi. I think that they were kind of like, hey, let's... let's you know, I don't know, Spencer and Heidi, that whole, even when Spencer said that to her in the beginning, you know, like, Shh, yellow, uh, you know, and trying to shut her down. Like, Spencer was, he was playing up that asshole character. Like, I know that. He was being over the top because he was behind the camera. The guy was very sweet to Heidi. I know that. Yeah. Next, I know. Uh, you and Heidi have both said that. Yeah. He wasn't um, acting like that when he was, then the cameras were turned off. He was a totally different person to her when the cameras you know, were turned off. So. I mean, their scenes on the show are always so funny and just full of life and entertaining. That's for sure. Oh, it's amazing. I, it's, yeah. it's, I love it. I do want to ask them when he does propose, which they were here to ask. Why? Well, you know, what about the one knee? He didn't. He just laid on. He didn't the get sand. A one knee, huh? No, he just laid on the sand and what? pulled it out. I just, you know. I just, do you think he proposed in real life, like off camera first, and then he did it for the cameras? I'm not sure. We need to ask us. Heidi. Yeah, that would be a Heidi and Spencer question because I don't really know actually the answer to that. Maybe. Yeah. Because yeah, you'd think he'd get down on one knee. Right. It's very or, traditional. Yeah. Yeah. They were pretty in on. I feel like they were a team at that point, and they. I feel like she almost knew that that was coming. You know, the proposing and all that. It kind of felt like that. Anyway. It didn't seem like a surprise to me. Article offers fast, affordable shipping across the U.S. and Canada. Plus, they won't leave you waiting around. You pick the delivery time and they'll send you updates every step of the way. Plus, their knowledgeable customer care team is there when you need them to make sure your experience is smooth and stress-free. Article believes in delightful design for every home. And thanks to their online-only model, they have some really delightful prices too. Their curated assortment of mid-century modern, coastal, industrial, Scandi, and boho designs make furniture shopping simple. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash hills and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash hills for $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Juneshine is the perfect drink to have at parties or barbecues. 
going to the beach, there's something for everyone and it doesn't have a ton of sugar or leave you feeling sick with cheap liquor. So this is one of my go-tos this summer. And guess what, guys? June Shine now makes canned cocktails, margaritas, vodka sodas, and rum cocktails at 8 to 10% ABV. That's one and a half shots made with premium ingredients that taste amazing and have no added sugar. Unlike your traditional canned cocktails that typically have 20 grams plus of sugar, tons of calories, and cheap liquor. It's made with only real premium ingredients, and unlike most alcoholic beverages, they are transparent about every ingredient they put in their products. Some of my favorites are the spicy mango, the passionate vodka soda, and a good Mai Tai. And best of all, it doesn't leave you with that I just drank a lot of sugar feeling and gives you a lighter, brighter buzz. With 4th of July just around the corner, why not make a big splash at that barbecue you're going to by bringing some of these insanely delicious, better-for-you alcohol? June Shine can be found in over 10,000 stores across the country. It's available at all the retailers you're already visiting for groceries and alcohol, like Whole Foods, Target, Ralph's, Vons, Albertsons, Kroger, Wegmans, Total Wine, Bevmo, Safeway, and more. We've worked out a special offer for our listeners. At any store, you can buy one June Shine package and get the second for only a penny. That's $12 to $20 in value. I personally recommend trying one of their best-selling variety packs. It's a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. Just go to juneshine.com slash hills, text them a photo of your receipt, and they'll Venmo you immediately. It's that easy. That's J-U-N-E-S-H-I-N-E dot com slash hills. Well, in the place that you guys went ring shopping on the show, um, it, it didn't look like a place that you would buy wedding <laughs> rings, right? No, I think that ring, And that was no, that obviously was not chosen the that, by the producers. No. Yeah, that was that ring was 20 bucks, okay? <laughs> you get that <laughs> thing on Amazon for 20 bucks. Right? That thing was, I was going to say, when I saw where you guys went, I was like, that is not a place to go for real, wedding rings. <laughs> I love how he goes like J-Lo ring. It's like, no. Some J-Lo, Kobe Bryant ring right there. How do you better not lose this? <laughs> he definitely got her a real ring out off camera, but I mean that one. I don't think Heidi's still wearing that ring. Like, mm. like, could be. You could be wrong. Could be wrong, but <laughs> I hope, hoping I get mad at me for that one. But no, that was uh, that that store was you know, not a. It was entertaining. It, it was, was for TV. I mean that ring would have been like a million dollars. That thing was like this, per- it was like a pink diamond or something that looked like it was like a like crystal a five carat. Yeah. It looked like a five carat <laughs> pink diamond. Like this thing. Uh, yeah, that was, that was not the thing. So then, uh, I think Audrina, uh, brings Justin over to meet Lauren and, and you guys kind of start talking about like, you guys should like get to know each other and which, um, it was a good idea for you to like not have the same mistakes that happened between Heidi and Spencer and her so that you guys could all get along. And, uh, well, what happens? Huh? I think yeah. Justin I mean, felt, and I that's Justin the thing little... too, like with any of my friends, I've always brought the guy I'm dating around and everybody usually is pretty cool. And if they have their differences, they, they say it, but they respect my decision. So coming into this and knowing Heidi and um, Lauren's situation, I guess I didn't even really think of that. I was just like, okay, we're all going to hang out. Everyone's going to be friends. You guys are going to like each other at some point. You know, don't judge him based on what I said. Give the guy a chance. Yeah. And you're also telling Lauren like, hey, by the way, I've, I've gotten to know him again. And he's definitely changed from two years before, which he probably hadn't changed you know what's crazy with Justin though? Off camera, he wasn't like the whole burping thing in one of the episodes, which I think is the next one. Like he's never done that. Like that was like almost on camera. I'm like, why would you do that on camera? You don't even yeah. do that off camera. That's right. gross. Yeah. He's playing it out. He, 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 knew, he, he knew what he was doing. He, he knew like, what he was doing. He got his. He, he got his. He has airtime. He knew he was. He was infiltrating his way onto the show. I mean, that's. Yeah, and then you yeah. start thinking like, "Hey, maybe Justin has some friends, and you can introduce him to Lauren." And no. Lauren quickly is like, "Hey, dude, we we do not share the same type of like guys, guys." Hey, um, um question: You think that Lo and Lauren sort of 
teamed up on him a little bit because you could see there was a very awkward more moment when Justin came in and then they're like, you know, the, the Justin Bobby thing. So you'd ever, were they kind of, were they being genuine when it, it felt like Lo was kind of being like a little, of course, cause she wanted her minutes of, of right. Of, like of, kind of yeah. messing with him as opposed to being genuine about what he wants. Like you to don't do that. You don't do that. You just don't do that to a person you just met. You don't start right. giving him shit. You kind of give him a chance to just be like nice and, he, they immediately like made him like a villain without giving him a chance, I feel like. So, Justin, I heard you are trying to change your name to Bobby? Well, my friends call me Bobby. Oh, can oh, I call everyone you? Everyone was confused on what they were being called, because there was a Justin no, as like, Bobby. all my friends call well, me Bobby. Ah. Like, oh. oh. Yeah, it was very um, uncomfortable and rude. And the thing is, I told, so Justin, I always knew him as Justin. His family and close friends called him Bobby because his middle name's Robert. So he'd go by Bobby. So he's like, Drina, just call me Bobby on the show. Don't call me Justin because you know, whatever. He's like, I just, you know, and I was like, well, what, do, what am I? So I told Lauren, what am I supposed to call him? Justin or Bobby? Because I'm used to calling him Justin, but he wants me to call him Bobby. So that's where the Justin Bobby thing came about because then Lauren's sitting there and tells Lo and then they start giggling and laughing about that and like make it into a thing, which is great because now that's his name. That's his name. I mean, that's crazy. That's how it now he's just, so he's not Justin or Bobby. He's Justin Bobby just from that whole moment. Oh my. From a little moment like that. How did he feel about that then? Was he pissed about that or was he okay with that? Oh, he was so pissed. He hated (laughs) them right after that. He's like, what the, like, what are these high school girls? Like they're fucking, or little catty blow. You know how Justin gets really upset and like, like, for sure he's he was, very he, sensitive like, yeah, he and he took that moment i remember and he was like never again like those girls and i was like no no they're not always like that they're really nice so there i am in the middle trying to play like right. he's really not like that they're not really like that it was just like it was a lot it was hectic yeah how was 40 deuce it was, took, it was it was fun. Ticket. I would go Let's there all the you, time. You swap Lauren out for Justin. What happened? Uh, what's what, what happened with that? The forty deuce. You and Lauren had plans, and then you, what happened? I honestly don't even remember if that was like a real thing, or if Lauren even really cared, because she knew that I was hanging out with Justin and I was going to go out after. But and she could have came with us. Yeah, they made that a thing. That me. yeah, that was kind of like that was a little improvised i think by the producers or whatever because again in my life with my you know they would be like oh go have fun we know you're with the guy that you like go do your thing we'll meet with you later we'll go with you or you know it's like i guess i'm just so used to easy going and just no drama this is all new to me yeah so then on the next scene is it's you getting driven uh you guys are driving to I don't know. If, to go ring shopping. You guys are ring this shopping. This is my one scene, you know. And he's telling you that he wants to marry her, and then he's telling you that would you be his best man? Dude, I'm probably gonna pop the question tomorrow at my beach house. What? Dude, I'm talking about getting married? Did you feel? I mean, that's kind of. I thought he was crazy. You thought, thought it was, was crazy, but it's also a, a, a an odd like. He, that was, was very shocking. To me. And I remember that being like. Come on, dog. So like, you weren't planning it? it? You didn't, he didn't never told you behind the scenes, like, hey, bro, by the way, like, I'm about to tell you something. Like, I think, I, no, I, you know, I don't really, rem- I don't remember the exact details of that, but I do remember saying to him in real life, like, bro, like, you're, you know, when Spencer would come up with these grand ideas for television or, or not, you know, I mean, he was always coming up with ideas. I would always call him crazy. And I don't, you know, he had some very brilliant ideas, but then also he had ones that were just completely over the top. So all the time I would say to Spencer, like, dude, you're out of your mind, bro. Like, come on, no. And you know, and then he'd go ahead and do it anyway. Spencer's gonna do what Spencer wants to do. So yeah. I think I knew he was gonna propose to her when he said that. And I but I did think he was a little it's like, bro, you're out of your mind. You've only known this girl for a year. You're twenty three years old. Let's you don't need to get married. Wait. I mean, that was genuine. I was being I was but, he's being also dead tell, but he's also asking you uh, <laughs> kind of like the question that most best friends wanna hear is like, Hey, will you be my best man? I mean, of co- yeah, sure. If you want, to, I mean, that didn't end up happening. But I you would, of course, I would, of course, I would have been a bit. You weren't the best man. I don't think so. No, I think by the time they actually got married, we had already had our falling out. I think you guys had a little falling out. But, but the falling out that comes up later. I mean, the falling out was not. That's, that was pretty, you know, TV. You know, it was just. We can. We'll get into that. When I know. We'll get into that. that. There's. We'll get into that. But it was. You know, I don't think there was ever a real falling out between us. But we just didn't talk for a while. 
basically. Yeah, so then that goes into Epic Records where Audrina tells Kiara about her budding romance with Justin Bobby and that Lauren doesn't like him because she's worried he's going to break her heart. Like Lauren doesn't like him mm -hmm. because she knows of, like, you know, things of the, in the past that, right, that like have that. happened and she doesn't want me to get hurt. She's just being a good friend. Audrina says she much prefers to learn the hard way that a guy is undeserving of her time and energy. Then adds that she's been single for a long time and she's ready for a little mingling. Boyfriend. <laughs> um, Kiara was like my go-to person. She was your Whitney. Lauren to Whitney, Audrina to Kiara. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I had to kind of reiterate what was going on. And, you know, and Lauren was being a good friend. And, you know, she, Lauren had that gift of just seeing through the blurred lines and knowing exactly, like, don't do it or this is going to happen, you know. And and she was being a good friend, trying to have my back and give me good advice. Um, I just don't take people's advice. I just had to learn the hard way. Like those bad boys for life. Ah, my 20s, yeah. Things have changed now, I, hope I think. So. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what, whatever happened to Kiara? Did you ever talk to her? Did you see her? Did, did... She still What's works that? at Epic Records. Um, right. wow. I think she got married last year. I still talk to Charlie Walk and Samantha. Um, he lives in New York. She lives in New York now. They all, when Epic moved to Wilshire, everybody kind of had different, they either went back to New York or Kiara stayed and took over, I think the A&R department. So I, I don't really, I haven't talked to Kiara, but that's the last I heard about her from Charlie and Samantha. Got it. Maybe you should reach out. Maybe she should come on the show just to like relive, relive some of those little powwows that you guys had back in the day. It's a good <laughs> idea. I'll re, I'll get her number. Um, so while en route to Santa Barbara, Spencer tells Heidi he's looking forward to getting out of L.A. and spending the weekend at a lovely beach house. Um, I mean, there's not much to do. The scene, you know, this is the, you know, getting one yeah. day. I would have liked to have seen that. But yeah, we just. I think this is just really showing Heidi and Spencer them walking on the beach and just showing how in love they are. And, you know, that they're together. They're in it for the long run and just their love life. Yeah. 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 And it, it was really, like like I said, it seemed quick, but look at them today. I was yeah. staying directed. He wasn't crazy. They did yeah. have a lot of romantic scenes, which is really sweet. Yeah. They, I mean, that that's kind of cool as a, like, to reminisce, like, on, on the times. You can always go back to, like, those scenes, cut them all out, and really have them in your life to, like, see how their love evolved throughout the years. Right? Yep. So, mm -hmm. Let's go to the, go, go back For and sure. get it. Um, and then Lauren goes back to Laguna Beach to see her parents and to tell her that she needs a little break from LA because I'm sure she, I'm sure people were telling her, hey, b by the way, Spencer proposed. And um, she said yes. And she's probably like, oh. Yeah. Well, and then they end this scene. It's like Lauren sitting there alone at the counter. And then it's me and Justin on his Harley. And then it's Heidi and Spencer running down the beach, like kissing. And it's like Lauren's left alone again. So it really wraps that. I was in the kitchen on that scene. I was just, she was on a... <laughs> See, we, need to, we needed you in that scene, Brody, with Lauren. Yeah, yeah, me just holding Lauren on the balcony. Looking back, Brody, do you think <laughs> watching it now, it's almost like, do you wish or ever think that what if I, Lauren and I would have just like went for it for like a showmance and just, I wonder how it would be. I mean... For a show, man, we kind of did. I think later on in the season, you see us sort of just kind of have this like. This would always rekindle. Like little, like kind of sort of like flirtatious uh, energy. I mean, no, I don't really regret anything. I think that it's that would have been just like a full blown acting. That would have just been totally not true. Because yeah. Ben and I were just sort of living it's our true. separate lives. And but like, you I know, feel like you had that with everyone. What do you mean? Like that little like flirtatious. Like, I mean, even with you know, me, like, I was single even with, I was like, with you. I don't know about that, Frankie. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my what, gosh. Man, like, what, man? You oh, forgot you about those gazing into your eyes? And yeah, you forgot about those. beer pong? Those <laughs> Sleazy T. Whatever happened to him? Gazing into your eyes while I'm just killing you a beer pong? Um, um, but uh, anyway, no, I don't regret that. I think that, I think Lauren and I had a nice little friendship. And we were able to play it up a little bit on the show. Um, but I enjoyed kind of the role I played, to be honest. Like, yeah. 
I got paid, you know, the, the, the way my manager set up that deal was like, if I even said one word on the show, I got paid. So like my shooting schedule was a lot less than your guys. You guys, I did a lot less work. And all I had to do was show up and be like, yeah, what's and up, start, Frankie? And then you start getting guaranteed episodes. <laughs> then, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, Eric, and then I got it to a point where Eric where, cooked it both up. Both of us, he like guaranteed yeah. us episodes without even having to be on them. Yeah. So we got, just, we, you know, just lit. I was just letting you guys carry the weight and I was just sitting back just... What a life. <laughs> Some of the funniest parts was you bringing new girls onto the show and all the girls' reactions. Okay, now that them. was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, like like seeing the girls' I don't know reactions. Why, uh, like I should have just been single on the show. That's what I wish I would have done. We, we would walk in and then he would bring the whatever the person was. And then all the girls immediately, they're just going to their like. Oh, the guy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was a Wait, wild I feel, environment. I feel like all of us, we were into, pretty like. Welcoming no, to all the you guys girls. Would always that... just go in you guys would always just corners yeah, were, and talk. I mean, like, it was uh... it was tough though bringing a girl onto that kind of show. You know, I mean, it was just you guys were already just solidified main carry. It was, but you guys it's were. Simple. I thought you were very nice, and it was. You know, it was. I thought everybody was very friendly to the girls that I brought on the show. Oh yeah, they were friendly, but at the beginning, you know how it was, how it was. Like they were of course going to go and talk about it on the corner that you brought. Oh, of course, yeah, whatever, whatever it was. It was kind of fun. What you sign up for? You know? I mean, we had to. We had to talk about everybody and everything, and what you think and how you feel and what they feel. The whole yeah. shebang. And then they well, get married, and that was it. Then they go on the balcony. I think that's the end of the episode. Yeah, they, they don't yeah. get married, but they oh yeah, they they, yeah, they, they tell each other that they love each other very much, and they did get married. They say some really beautiful words to each other, and that was awesome. Did you think it was beautiful, Frank? I, I thought it was beautiful. I <laughs> thought their their words meant a lot to them to them, and I thought watching it, it was it was kind of cool. Where were see. you on this episode? Because I didn't see you on this episode. <laughs> I was just getting paid at home. He was taking a break from all the drama from <laughs> the last episode. episode? <laughs> I, I, actually, I did. Uh, um, anything that involved Brody, I got a little piece on the back end. He just doesn't know about it. Oh, uh, shit. Um, um, all right. Fan questions, Brody. Anyway, fan, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, let's, get into, let's get into some of these fan calls. We love your guys' questions. So if you have a question for us, leave it on a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash the hills or leave us a message on our IG, the hills rewatch, or on YouTube. Let's get into it. Hi, this is Arlene from Texas. My question is for Audrina. Um, just want to know what exactly is your timeline with Justin Bobby? Like, how long have you known him? How long were y'all dating off and on? Um, and do you still currently talk to him or keep in contact? Because it seemed like on the reboot of The Hills that there was still a little spark there. So um, just wondering if y'all still have any contact. Thanks. Bye. I think Arlene's over on Instagram trying to slide into Justin's DMs. She wants to figure out. Um, So I met Justin when I was 19 and I worked, that's when I worked at Coyote Studio. I was a receptionist. That was real. Um, But he was, I met him there at 19 and then we hung out. He was from Orange County. So we started hanging out down here and then we both lived in LA. So it just evolved naturally. And then, Gosh, we were, we dated, um, he came on first season. We filmed one scene with him at my apartment that I lived at alone and, um, he did my hair, but he like didn't say much and it was just so awkward. So the producers were like, he's a good looking guy, but I just, you know, I just, I don't know that there's just not that something's missing. So it's like, okay, that's fine. I'll just date other guys on the show and then date him off the show. It's like show life and then, you know, Justin. Um, and then we were off and on. I, I don't know. I think we were off and on till I was like 23, 19 to 23 or 24. And then that was the end of it. Um, and then I, the last time I talked to him, um, my niece died four months ago and he called me um just to send his condolences and talk to me and uh, about that. So, and then I'm trying to get him to come on the show, but now he's not responding. So I think I might need Brody and Frankie's help to try to get him on here so we can ask him some questions. If he's not responding to you, he's definitely not going to respond to me. 
<laughs> That's for damn sure. Uh, yeah. uh, but Frankie, you know, he loves Frankie. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening and watching. Please follow, rate, and review Was It Real? The Hills Rewatch wherever you listen to your podcast. If you're a listener, remember you can also watch every episode on YouTube and Spotify. And you can listen to exclusive bonus content plus ad-free episodes by signing up at castmedia.com slash cast plus. That's cast with a K media.com slash cast plus. See you guys next week. Laters. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.